Woman, you are remarkable. Well, you can thank the Harbor Towers catering service. I'd much rather thank you. Look, uh, you think there are too many flowers. I mean, I don't want anybody to think we're ostentatious. Everything is an absolutely perfect taste, except for this crooked knot that I tied. Would you give it your expert touch, please? Oh, yeah, sure. I think I'm making it worse, Alan. I'm That's sorry. That's because your hands are shaking. Mom. I can't help it. I'm a nervous wreck. Hey, everything is going to be wonderful. How do you know that? We're having eight people for dinner. I mean, what if I forgot to order something? Monica, the entire staff of the Harbor Towers is at your command. All you have to do is pick up that telephone. They'll bring you whatever you like. I would like a favor from you. Gladly. Kiss me. Oh, yes. Mmm. <clears throat> Anything else, my lady? Oh. Do you have any idea how happy you make me? Well, if I take how happy I am and subtract just a little bit because you couldn't possibly be as happy as I am, I think I'd come up with a reasonable estimate. There is no point in talking about anything seriously with you. Monica. What? I absolutely adore you, and I'm just trying to get your mind off this party. Everything is just going to be wonderful. <sighs> sure. Mm -hmm. Flowers, hors d'oeuvres, yes. Glasses, candles, scotch, wine. Oh, <gasps> I forgot vermouth. Vermouth? Vermouth. Vermouth. I didn't see it. <laughs> Monica. What? The fact that Leslie's going to be here tonight is what's got you on edge, hasn't it? Yes. I don't know, Alan. I, I can't explain it. There is just something... Something in her attitude that's very unnerving. If you were going to be worried about being unnerving tonight, you would worry about Tracy, not Leslie Weber. Oh, Alan, I swear to you, if your sister says one thing out of line, I will kill her. No, no, I beat you to it. I had a nice, long, quiet, heart-to-heart -heart with my sister this afternoon, and she promised to be on her best behavior. We've heard that song before. Yes, but we've never been around Tracy when she's trying to impress a certain gentleman by the name of Mitch Williams. Well, all we can hope for is that Mr. Williams likes his women soft-spoken and demure. If he does, he's in for a heck of a shock. Mitch, did I keep you waiting long? Not too long. Oh, come in. I thought the party was upstairs. Ah, oh, well, it is, but there's no rush. Can I take your coat? No, no, wait. You called Gladys. You said I was supposed to be here at 7 o'clock sharp, right? Gladys got the message wrong. I told her to tell you to meet me here around 7 so we'd have a chance to chat. Want a drink? <laughs> Why not? Great. Would you make me one, too? I've been having trouble with my bracelet, and I'd like to get it fixed, okay? Mm. What, are you, what are you drinking? Oh, anything's all right, just as long as it's got lots of vodka, ice, mm -hmm. and a whisper of vermouth. <laughs> oh, I had a little uh, telephone call from Senator Redford today. No kidding. Huh? I'm impressed. What it might want? He wanted to have lunch with me to discuss my future plans for the November election. And what did you say? Well, I told him the truth. He said, I don't think that far ahead. Wonderful. Don't you want the senior senator from your own political party to ever call you again? I'm not worried. Well, you certainly should be. He's going to think you don't care about your own political career with remarks like that, Mitch. Oh, you're so worried about my political career. Why don't you call Daddy and have him call the illustrious senator and discuss my indifference? Do you want to tell me what my father has to do with this? Yeah, l listen. Your father set it up. He arranged it. The senator didn't call himself. Or else you called your godfather yourself. Which was it? Neither. I had nothing to do with that phone call. My father had nothing to do with that phone call. But maybe next time, you will take the time to get your facts straight before you turn down something as important as a luncheon engagement with a state senator. I didn't turn it down. Having lunch with him next week? Oh, Mitch. <laughs> I'm so glad. You are a man on your way up. You know that, don't you? The sky is the limit. You can have anything you want. Yeah. You hit it right on the head. I can have anything I want. Of course. And if something comes to this lunch with the senator, I can take it or leave it. And it's my decision. You bet it's your life. Yeah. Ah, it's 
a good scotch. Is it really? And what exactly happened to my martini? Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, hey, Very it's sorry. okay. It's all right. Uh, here you go. Thanks a lot. This is to your lunch with Senator Redford and to anything you want. Leslie, you look beautiful. Thank you. I mean, I know I pretty much pushed you into going tonight, but I guarantee you, once we get there, you'll have a marvelous time. I'll be with our old friends. Well, except for Tracy and Mitch Williams. And I wouldn't exactly describe Monica as an old friend of mine. I, I thought that animosity between the two of you was something that was in the past. Yes, of course it is, and I'm trying very hard to keep it there, but sometimes it's easier than others. <laughs> Why? Leslie, lately, Monica has proven herself to be a friend to all of us, and over and over. But there was a time when Monica was more than just a friend to you. Leslie, I thought we talked that out yesterday. We did. We talked about a lot of things. And I told you that there are times when I still feel a little insecure around Monica. I told you that. Then do something for me. When we walk into that party tonight, I want you to remember that you're with your husband, the man who fell in love with you, and ask you to be his wife forever and ever. How will you do that? Will you answer something honestly for me? If you had met me recently, in the last few months, would you still have fallen in love with me and asked me to marry you? Absolutely, Leslie. You're still the woman that you've always been. And I still want to spend the rest of my life with you. That hasn't changed. And nothing will ever make it change. Thank you. That makes me feel a lot better. I mean it, Leslie. Just remember tonight how much I love you. I will. I can get through anything if I know that. I'll leave the menus, Mr. Baldwin. And when you've decided, just let me know. Thank you. Okay. Well, I told you we weren't going to be the only ones having dinner early. I'm glad we left home as early as we did, Scotty, while it was still light. Wasn't the drive up here beautiful? Yeah, yeah, it was. How about the sunset on the mountain? It was something else, wasn't it? Yeah. This is a really beautiful dining room. Have you been here before? <laughs> Laura, listen. I want us to promise each other something tonight, okay? If I can. I want us to forget about everything that's happened before in our life. And I want us to think about tonight as being like a... Like a new beginning, okay? You don't know how much I'd like to be able to do that, Scotty. But so much has happened. Maybe, maybe, but look at us. I mean, we're having dinner together, just like we used to. And I don't know about you, Laura, but I feel closer to you than I've ever felt before. I do, too. Especially tonight. Being up here at the lake and away from Port Charles and all those people who stare at me say terrible things behind my back. Laura, Laura, come on. The only thing I want you to feel tonight is, is beautiful. Because that's what you've always been to me. General Hospital will continue in a moment. Oh, Bobby. I thought you'd be long gone by now. 
I could say the same thing about you, Dan. I thought you and Jesse left together early tonight, as usual. Well, we had a late meeting with the accountants, and Jesse was a little tired, so she went on home. She's all right, isn't she? Oh, sure. Listen, if you don't have any plans after you get off, I'd love to have you have dinner with me at the club. Oh, gee, thanks, Dan, but I've got another half an hour to go, and I think I better go right home and see if Jesse needs anything. Bobby, Jesse's fine. She's just a little tired, that's all. Well, thanks anyway, Dan, but you see, I'm waiting for this really important phone call, and I don't want to miss it. Well, I hope it's not from the same person who upset you so last night when he called. Last night? Listen, Bobby, I don't know what the phone call was about, and it's none of my business. But Jesse and I were very worried about you. We still are. Dan, really, there's no reason to worry. And I will explain the whole thing tonight to Jesse when I get home so she doesn't worry. Well, I'm just as worried as Jesse is. Don't you think you owe me an explanation, too? Oh, Dan, I don't want to burden you with any more of my problems. Look, I've got broad shoulders. Now, if you've got a problem, I want to hear about it. Come on. Well, it's really a long story, and it, it all has to do with all these family ties that I'm really trying very hard to forget about. Well, obviously you haven't forgotten. Now, what is it? Is someone in your family in some kind of trouble? My sister. You see, she's been calling me to see if I could lend her some money to get her out of a jam. Are you going to do it? Yeah, well, I would, but it's an awful lot of money. It's $500. I even tried calling my brother Luke, who I haven't seen in ages, but he can't help her out either. Well, I can, and it would be my pleasure. Dan, no. It's against my principles to take money from anyone, especially someone who's been as nice to me as you have. Bobby, what good is money if we can't use it to help our friends? You don't know my sister. Well, I know you, and I see how upset you are. So, let me write you a check, please. Well, Dan, see, she might not need it. See, she said she was going to try to get the money somewhere else. That's what the phone call that I'm waiting for is, is all about. All right. But if you need it, you come to me right away. You promise? I promise. But only if it is strictly a loan. And I promise I will pay you back every penny, no matter how long it takes. <laughs> okay. It's a deal. Now, you see, there aren't any problems that you can't solve as long as you've got friends. Friends like you. Good night, Bobby. And you let me know, okay? Dan, why couldn't you... Were you talking to me, Bobby? No, no. It's nothing. Forget it. Well, you start to say something. Finish it. I just wish that I had met somebody as kind and as understanding as you are a few years ago. That's all. Thanks, Bobby. I consider that a great compliment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.